Hey guys, today we're going to do something a little bit different. One thing that we get asked a lot is, how much does it cost to eat at the parks? Well, in today's video, we're going to show you just that. We'll take a walk around Islands of Adventure and show you what food options that you can find and what kind of pricing to expect at each place. So come on, let's go explore. Islands of Adventure has 16 restaurants, including a few that have some of our favorite foods. One of the first places you'll come across is the Crescent Moon Bakery. They serve sandwiches for breakfast and lunch, and also offer a variety of baked goods, including muffins, pies, and cookies. Confisco is located just past the Croissant Moon and is one of two sit-down restaurants in the park. Here you'll find a more traditional restaurant food with appetizers and entrees. They offer a variety of dishes from chicken quesadillas to pan roasted salmon. If you're looking for a break in the heat of the day and a variety of food options, this is a great choice. My kids wanted Cinnabon, which is located just across the street from Confisco. There is a Cinnabon located in CityWalk, however, this one usually has a shorter line. My son likes to get the uh, mini cinnamon rolls, and my daughter gets the iced coffee. She said it's one of the best that she's ever had. If you're looking for a quick snack, this might be a good spot for you. If you make a right just past Confisco's, you will find yourself in Seuss Landing. They have a couple good food options here, and one of them being a favorite of ours. That place is right here. Green Eggs and Ham. They offer a variety of tot options with good portion sizes as well. Uh, one of my favorites is the Buffalo Chicken Tots. If you like buffalo sauce, this is a must try. Another option is the Circus McGurkis Cafe. Just follow the high in the sky trolley from Green Eggs and Ham and it will lead you to Circus McGurkis. Uh, this place offers more of your traditional park food with burgers and fries, chicken sandwiches, and pizza. If you want something simple or need a variety for the kids, this is probably the best option for you in this area. As we make our way around the park, our next stop is in the Lost Continent. They have a lot of Greek themed food here, including the Yeros. And according to our Greek friends, uh, the correct pronunciation is Yero, not Hero or Gyro. Uh, the best location to get a Yero is at Fire Eater's Grill. Fire Eater's Grill is a good stop for those wishing to try something new, but still have the option of classic foods. Uh, besides the Yeros, Fire Eater's also has chicken fingers, chili cheese fries, and salads. Just down from Fire Eaters, you will find Desert Kebabs. Here you can get their take on a traditional Greek kebab, a Greek salad, or you can even pick up a snack like pretzels, churros, or yogurt. We chose to eat at Mythos today. This is the second of two sit-down restaurants inside Islands of Adventure. They were also awarded the world's best theme park restaurant by Theme Park Insider. The theming and decor is really neat to see, and the food here is even better. I had the spinach and garlic ravioli. It may not look great, but it was delicious. My wife had the Mythos Signature Lamb Burger, and she said it was fantastic and would definitely have it again. My daughter had the gnocchi bolognese, and my son had the catch of the day, which was the swordfish. Overall, it was a great experience and really didn't cost them much more than other eateries around the area. Just a little advice, be sure to make a reservation. If you try to do a walk-in around lunchtime, you could be waiting for several hours for a table. If Mythos is something you would like to try, you definitely need to get a reservation. The next restaurant on our food finding adventure is the Three Broomsticks and it is located in the Harry Potter area of Hogsmeade. It can be found about halfway up the path on the left right across from Hagrid's motorbike right entrance. They serve traditional British fare here and have breakfast daily from well whenever the park opens since that varies to about 10.30 a.m. 
A couple of my favorite dishes here are the fish and chips. They're really good. Uh, as well as the chicken and rib platter if you're hungry and the rotisserie smoked chicken salad. This is delicious and great if you're trying to watch what you eat a little bit. Uh, this place gets really busy around lunch, so my recommendation is to be sure and go early. I would say around 11 or so, or wait until at least after 3.30 or 4. If you go any time in between, it's probably going to be very busy and you'll have a long wait. This is the area that you will either eat or get eaten. And since they have several restaurants here, I don't think that you're going to have anything to worry about. Hopefully. I just wanted to take a quick minute here and recommend a place. It's not an eatery, uh, but it will definitely help the nervous adults with overcoming the fear of roller coasters. And it might even help loosen the purse strings just a little bit to buy that souvenir the kiddo really wants. This is called the Watering Hole, and they have some great mixed drinks here and some beer on tap. Uh, for the specialty drinks, my wife recommends the Fossilizer or the Prehistoric Punch. And I'm not a big fruity drink guy, but I will agree with her. These were really good and great choices. My recommendation is the Isla Nablar, and it's an IPA. So if you don't like bitter, hoppy beer, you may want to try to avoid this one. So let's get back to our food tour. The first eatery that you come to in the Jurassic area is Burger Diggs. Now, as the name says, it's uh, primarily a burger place, but you can also get a chicken sandwich, salad, and a variety of other side dishes. If you're looking for something quick and filling, well, you really can't go wrong with pizza, and Universal has plenty of pizza places. The one located in the Jurassic area is called Pizza Predatoria. They offer several variations of pizza, along with salads and breadsticks. The final eatery in the Jurassic area is Thunder Falls Terrace. If you're looking for a more healthy option, this is probably a good choice for you. At least it has a more healthy variety to choose from than the other eateries, if you can get that from theme park food anyway. Uh, they have rotisserie chicken, roasted pork, turkey legs, rice bowls, and salads. Toon Lagoon has a couple of great eateries with good portion sizes. One of my favorite is Blondie's, home of the Dagwood. This is a large sandwich that is piled high with ham, turkey, and roast beef. If you want something cold and filling on a hot day, I highly recommend this one. They also have made order sandwiches where you can choose from ham, turkey, roast beef, tuna, or just go crazy and get it all. If that's not for you, they also offer foot-long hot dogs and a variety of sides to choose from. Wimpy's is located just catty corner uh, across from Lonnie's. They have two burgers to choose from, their famous Wellington burger and a vegan supreme burger. They also have chicken fingers and one of my favorite desserts, Dole Whip. If you need a little more variety, the Comic Strip Cafe is a food court style and has a lot of options to choose from. It's located right around the corner from Blondie's and here you can choose from burgers, chicken sandwiches, pizza, salads, and if you really want to mix it up, how about some Asian cuisine? It's just okay, but it's a good variety if everyone in the family wants something quick and different or you just have picky eaters. The last area on our food tour is the Marvel Superhero Island. They have two okay-ish eateries here, and the first is the Captain America's Diner. Here they offer burgers, pork burgers, chicken sandwiches, and salads. I haven't eaten here myself, but I've heard mixed reviews. If you've eaten here before, let us know what you think. And the last place on our tour is Cafe 4. If you're having trouble finding it, look for the Big Green Hulk Coaster, and it's right across the street from there. I have eaten here, and I'm going to tell you, it's just okay. It's not bad, but I've had better food around other areas of the park. If you're hungry and you need something quick, then Cafe 4 is just fine for that. Uh, here they'll have, I know, it's a shocker, pizza. However, they do have other options like pasta dishes, sandwiches, and salads. If you're hungry and you need a place to eat, this is a good option, but it's just not our favorite. 
I hope this video has helped you get an idea of the best places to eat around Islands of Adventure and also helped giving you an idea of the food prices. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps us get our content out to more people. Thanks again and see you on the next adventure.